All right. Good morning, SGDQ. I am Dan, the VP, and I'm I'm really excited to be here on the final day of fundraising. I know we hate to say final day because it's like Ugh. the week just started, but I've got a new uh, new game to show off, and uh, I've got some friends back here on commentary. Bobby, how are you doing this morning? Doing all right. My name is Bobby, if you hadn't already guessed, but I am also a speedrunner of this game. And uh, I've been showing this game off in the practice room here and there, and just randomly people, I, I don't think they're associated with each other, have been telling me how much this game just kind of like looks like Sonic a little bit. And I really didn't get it to begin with, but it's SGDQ, we have a wealth of knowledge, and so I figured if the people wanted this, a Sonic opinion, we would go to the source. Argic, how are you doing this morning? I'm great, man. I am glad to be here for this one. Flip the sleep schedule and run twice, because why not? It's oh, going to yeah. be fun. We are going to jump in here. We've got a speed run mode. Shout out to Squidbit and to uh, PID Games. I don't want to forget to shout out to Devin the Publisher. Yes. They gave us uh, a lot of cool <laughs> tools. And so we're going to jump into speed run mode, and we're going to play with Lyria. And time is going to start when we, whenever I select the character. We're going to start in three, two, one. Go. Good luck. All right. So we are playing as Lyria. She is the unlockable character in this game. And I think you're going to see really quickly why we prefer to play as her. Uh, the main character is Gabriel. He's got a pretty fun tool set, but Lyria can run. And this is games done quick. So we're going to stick with Lyria for this run uh, for the entire entirety of it. I um, mean, she's got a pretty interesting uh, kit as well, doesn't she, Bobby? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so she, she's sort of like the ninja sort of character with a lot of range. Her basic attack will actually toss these sort of uh, these kunai at the enemies. And she also has some like, really good aerial attacks as well, which cleave this sort of like elite enemy into. That was a really nice damage stack from Dan to VP. And here we go. We are jumping and we are attacking. We do not want that. We do not want to attack while we're on the ground, much akin to classic Castlevania games you will be hindered by a stop to your movement if you try to do anything sort of an attack on the ground. So we are running, we are jumping, and anything in our way, we are just tearing asunder with these kunai. In the first couple of levels, uh, the, the, the kunai will pretty much dispose of these enemies in one fell swoop. But uh, in the next stages onward, we are going to need to be a bit more depth with our kit and the sub weapons that we will continue to gain uh, as we progress through this game. Yeah, we're mainly going to see one sub-weapon, which is the one I have now. It's kind of an, an arc-throwing scythe. Be real reminiscent of several games. I'll let you take your pick of which one uh, you think it's from. I will not argue with you at all. We also get to take advantage of the fact that Lyria kind of needs a little leg up for the first couple of levels. The levels are exactly the same between the two characters. So she needs the double jump right away to be able to make her way through. And then also the like with the ranged attack, you get a lot more consistency to just kind of hold right and uh, get through these sections quickly. Yeah, this uh, this boss coming up right now is, is going to be a lot trivialized by Lyria's move kit with her basic attacks alone. I got the glitch and I have one HP. Oh, oh. <laughs> you know what? That has never happened before. Hey. There we go. Hey. Send it. Send it. He there said are, the thing. There are a couple <laughs> screen transitions that, for whatever reason, just eat all your stuff. Or sometimes they can bless you. So maybe the RNG will come in our favor later on in the run. But we're just going to uh, burn her down as quickly as we can. We have a pretty big health pool throughout the entirety of the run, so we can take some damages, uh, say, take some damage hits, and then take advantage of the ranged attack, ranged attack to avoid um, some of this boss's other move set. Yeah, as far as I'm concerned right now, uh, the uh, blood rain attack and her phase transitions are, uh, you know, mandatory. Yeah. And there we go, just a little bit more. Oh, she just Whoa. got away from it. Oh. We're gonna get one more phase here. Make sure not to die to the desperation attack. We do have uh, an in-game timer, which is accurate enough that we use it for the leaderboard. Um, it pauses any time we're not, like, actually gaming. So the RTA time we're going to see is going to be a little bit different what the, than what the in-game time gives us. But uh, we're on to stage two. And, uh, Cell, we can take uh, a couple of donations if you've got them. 
Absolutely. We have $1,000 from Max Hancock, who says thank you to GDQ, Dr. Soap Borders, and all who strive to bring positivity to the lives of others. Thank you so much for that very generous donation. I just want to remind everyone that we have an incentive open for an upcoming run for Curse Crackers, for whom the bell toils. The incentive is to pet the dog. Who doesn't want to pet a dog, everyone? Uh, we need $10,000 total in order to see that happen. And right now, we're sitting at uh, about 54% funded. So don't forget to scroll down and add that incentive when you're donating so that we can see that good dog pet. That is the true SGDQ experience, by the way. Anybody that was not able to make it out, there are like seven dogs on site. So if, uh -huh. we, if we do not get uh -huh. to pet the dog in the game that has a pet the dog incentive, I'm, it just won't be the true experience. Coming up on a, a mandatory kind of uh, fight section here. This is where we're gonna get our one upgrade that we really need to finish this category. Good stuff. Um, and let us break these blue blocks. I would encourage anybody that, you know, if this game looks interesting to you, definitely check it out. Um, the, the main character has a little more of a diverse toolkit, and um, there's some unique elements that you're not gonna see in this run. Um, and it really does the genre a good, uh, it does the genre a service to see kind of the modern take on these harder, really punishing, aspects, uh, one of them being just, if you've got complete air control, but if you get hit in the air, uh, you die. And <laughs> that's gonna be a theme throughout the run. Hopefully we don't see it too many times, but we're gonna try to push through these, uh, these sections as quickly as possible. And if you're thinking there might be more instant death, it only, it only goes up from here. <laughs> yeah, you were saying, like people are saying the main character is like, oh, maybe similar to Sonic and whatnot. It's like, yeah, she's blue, she's running fast, but I'm getting that old school Shinobi vibe. Yeah, that's what I'm getting yes. from that. And it's just like looking at it, it's like, yeah, there's going to be a difficulty here that if you're not careful with it, you're going to run into trouble real fast. Like trying to get it in those small blocks there. You're taking out the one big one because that's quicker, but it's like then you've got to try and thread that needle. And yeah. Dan's just making it look easy. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Dan is absolutely crushing this run right now uh, with Lirio just kind of like leaning into that classic, you know, NES aspect of, uh, you know, the difficulty of games like these. Um, it's a more of a precision platformer than ever since you do have to really take care of not being hit in the air to, so as to not get knocked in the pits below. Um, yeah. Yeah, I really appreciate the, the unique takes that uh, different indie devs have on like, okay, what's the difficulty that I want? Where do I want to kind of give grace to, to really showcase that uh, their unique vision? I'm gonna try to jump over a trigger right here, and if I don't die, you know I got it, I got it. That saves like no time, but it's, it's fun. There are a couple of places there where you can jump over uh, little mandatory triggers. And we're on to the next boss. Yeah, we're just expending all of our weapon energy right here. Um, this boss is actually like you know pretty menial. Like like uh, if the fight goes on long enough, he'll transform into various spirit you know animals just like that, and you'll have to dodge as a you know as accordingly. But Lyria just kind of piles on that enough DPS. That was quick. To not even like that cycle through his entire yeah. move set, and that was expertly done by Dan the VP. It's going to be a theme for a couple of bosses that they have kind of a blind spot behind them, so we're just going to take advantage, kind of get back there and pick them off from the back. But uh, we're coming into stage three, and we can uh, we can take a couple more donations. So, absolutely, we have ten dollars from Simon, who says, "Did you say there are many likenesses to other games and will not argue?" So. Is this Bluey? Hooray! Hooray! You know, dude, shout out to one big eye. If his uh, kid sees the Bluey reference and uh, he's back there on the front couch, I know if his kid's watching, he will be happy to <laughs> hear Bluey referenced. I agree, it, it, this is a Bluey game. The second Bluey game ever at GDQ. We got time for another one? <laughs> when, when is the Bluey block? That's what I want to know, a GDQ Bluey block. We got time for another donation? Oh, yeah. All right, we have $50 from Osterok, who says, thanks, SGDQ, for entertaining me during my 5 a.m. paperwork all week. Thank you right. for that. We're picking up the, uh, the, the sub-weapon, which is uh, going to be like the main sub-weapon of choice uh, going on forward. It's a very nice, really homing uh, sub-weapon. As Lyria will, like, you know, jump through these obstacles, 
and again, we're going to be trying to attack while we're in the year and gaining all of our momentum. And uh, as you can see, Dan the VP cleaving the enemies, the spiders in his way, just so as to not get hindered by any of their movement or any of their hitboxes, just juggling double jumping, clasping onto the vines, and that sub-weapon in very succinct okay. section. Okay, that, that, that is one of the, yes. the more, the trickier sections at the beginning of this run, and you have to get through with enough damage or enough health to damage boost all these enemies or you've got to take an intentional death. So that was about as good as you can get it. You can't get that power up uh, in another spot, so if you don't take it through there, if you have to take a death, you don't get to go through nearly as quickly or as stylishly. And um, I do advocate that style points should take off from your timer in a speed run. I, I really don't have a community around that yet, but if you would like to join that community, I will lead <laughs> the style points. Maybe we can have like a ranking system. Um, so I'm gonna try to pull off a glitch here in this boss fight. It's, uh, I'm not the best at it at this point, but we should be able to save some time if we get stuck in the floor here and then get up, uh, there we go, and now we can shoot a lot faster because we don't jump, oh. but the game thinks we're jumping. Oh. Almost didn't make that jump. I'm gonna finish off this spider real quick, and uh, shout out to uh, uh, Bedwa Blackburn back here on the couch as well for giving me that strat. Also, he's a backup runner at the event, which uh, shout out to all the backup runners. I've been there myself. It's uh, You do a, a big service uh, keeping the event running even when there's extra time or when, when people have to drop out. So shout out to all of you. We got a little intro section coming up, so if we can take a, a couple more donations if you got them, so. Absolutely, we got love from all over the world coming in right now, such as $25 from Fitz, who says, good morning from France. Yeah, I know it's nighttime. Just wanted to say thank you to everyone for that great week of speedruns. Always one of the best moments of the year. Here's my little contribution to help Medicines and Fortes. Now back to watching more speedruns. And $250 from Killjoy, who says, howdy from Australia. Put this towards killing the animals. I'm not sure what that means, but at this point, I'm too afraid to ask. But do it anyway. Of course, if you don't want to kill the animals, we do have that pet the dog incentive where we get to have an animal be very happy with us at the end of the run. Awesome. Thank the donations all over the world. That You know, getting up early for a run, you know, not everybody's cup of tea, but getting to hear all the love from all over the world, especially interacting with the international community. We've got some amazing restreamers that, like, if you're just here in the States, you might not be aware of, like, the, the time and energy that, like, the German restream and the French restream and everybody around the world puts in. It's uh, it's always great to see, especially for these indie games that I absolutely love. Get to see Showcase on the big stage, get to have, you know, introduce Argic to a game he's never seen before. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hey, I'm enjoying it. Like, there's some banging tunes going on right now. I'm just like vibing as you're going through the stages here. You know, I'm glad you said that. These are two of like my favorite, like chiptune indie game composers between, um, Yo, speaking of a uh, compo <laughs> speaking Oops, of no, that composer. was that was intended. Okay, that cool. was intended. This is there is like no health in this section. I should have prefaced that. Oh yeah. Um, nah, keep us guessing. Oh yeah. I was gonna say, speaking of uh, music composers, uh, PID Games has been absolutely eating this SGDQ with this Lords of Exile, Blazing Chrome and also Gravity Circuit on the game's menu. And I just want to shout out a very special music composer, Dominic, yes. who has worked on all of those soundtracks, that bringing you those really great banging tunes to your ears. I can't wait for Gravity Circuit. The soundtrack in that is so, so good. good. <laughs> and hearing more of it here is just like, yes. It's the, uh, the other composer did Cyber Shadow. That's what I was trying to think of. Yes. It, it is yes. really just like an all-star list. Try not to get hit here. All this boss's damage does uh, two full hearts or bars or whatever you'd like to call them. And I'd like to save one here so I can do a little damage boost, a little bit of extra damage in. This boss is pretty variable. Um, the first phase, he can kind of jump however he likes. Nice. But we're halfway through the game. That's level four. 
So you pointed out that the health is like bars there. I'm just thinking Golden Axe. <laughs> it's like, oh. No, no, I, I won't allow Golden Axe. That's the oh. one. Oh. No, no, okay, no. we found one, chat. We don't found don't one. bring that juju in here. We found one. There you go. Well, before we start any other discourse about this, how about we, how, how about we hear a couple more donations? Oh, yeah. Absolutely, Arctic. I think you'll like this one. Ten dollars from Makare G. First time watcher from Scotland. Amazing job, everyone. Absolutely loving the vibe, and what a great cause. And we have twenty-five dollars from nicknamed Osiris. Don't forget to add incentives when donating. Less than three. Another little mini boss here. This boss is intended to show off a power up that we're not going to get, that Gabriel would get. But again, Lyria just. She's quick enough that she doesn't need all the extra abilities to get around. And uh, there's a lot of unique uh, backdrops, backgrounds and settings through the rest of this game. It's really, the story is kind of you're, you're going and um, confronting different lords in exile, if uh, you can kind of get where the name comes from now. Um, so there, it's, the dev was really, got to incorporate all the different classic settings that you would expect from a game like this. And I, I really appreciate getting to see the unique, like all the unique takes on, you know, a train level or a ghost house level or a ship level. And uh, I'm all, I'm all here for it. So you were saying about the power-ups there, can she go and get them? Or is that the case of the game's just like, nah, she doesn't need no, them? No, she doesn't need them. She so just, yeah. they just don't exist in the game. Fair. All right, we got a, a kind of a an auto scroller here. If you want to hit us with some donations, so we got Absolutely. plenty of time. Absolutely, uh, we have a hundred dollars from Gears to Gnomes. Greetings from Germany! Thank you for another amazing event. Less than three, and we also have hundred and twenty-five from Uli Wooly saying, "Fantastic runners, awesome moderation, fabulous crew." In summary, a great event. Thank you so much. Greetings from Germany. And we have $1,000 from Anonymous, simply saying, greetings from Germany, less than three. Yo, shout outs to greetings from Germany. <laughs> All right, the rest of this level is, is pretty intense jump-wise. There's, it's hard to see, hopefully, how much kind of ending lag there is between attacks and jumps, and it can be, be really kind of hairy sometimes, trying to get your double jump out or trying to have your double jump not eaten and the idea here is to not attack on the ground like bobby pointed out because we will kind of get stuck but also not get shot into a pit yeah and, and, and even then um there is some sort of like you know like animation like wind up and recovery to throwing your sub weapon so you do not want to have that end while you're landed on the ground or else your you know your movement will be hindered and this is something that we haven't uh, caught up until today but like or until like just now but uh, there are little shops that you can, you know, uh, purchase either like sub weapons like Dan did right here, or you can do, you know, full health, which is going to be a really good boon for this fight because you're going to need all the health to sponge on through for this boss. And if you think this is going to be enough, th there is a second phase where Dan's going to have to focus a little bit uh, to not get one shot KO'd. Yeah, this is the Sekiro boss is what I like to call it. We might end up in another round here. Didn't quite get the, the damage. We've got to take the little step of shame down here because we cannot expend any more health. That's but a that big would be boar. All right. Yeah, it is a big boar. But, you know, eh. Yeah, you're expending all of your resources just to get this boss down as, much, as fast as possible. And now you have to deal with this second phase where uh, the head will be bumbling about rather uh, haphazardly. Yeah, the DVD a... logo boss. <laughs> will it hit the corner? Ooh. Luckily, it takes the same cycle every time. I'd like to have an extra bar of health here, and I don't, so we'll play it a little bit safer. There, there we go. go. Jump up here and grab this orb. Ooh. Any orbers? Yeah. Yeah. I know there's some SMW sickos on the couch. I know that. I know they can. <laughs> I know they can orb once or twice. All right. So the difficulty is just gonna keep ramping up from here on out. We're gonna have a mini boss in this stage. We're gonna have lots of floating enemies and fish. I've already died to one fish. I should have had like a fish death counter. 
Um, but these guys, if you have to slow down at all, or don't you don't kill these pink pink enemies, they will just keep coming after you nonstop, like that one tried to do. And all these fish, they're triggered by your um, if you're close enough to them. So I can jump over some of them, but not all of them. Oh, missed one there. That'll be all right. A lot of attacking enemies while they're still off screen to get the timing right, which is really a boon for uh, Lyria with her ranged weapon being able to do that. Gabriel has a little bit, struggles a little bit here and there, but got a mini boss coming up, and this should be a quick kill, saving all our health so we can tank some damage here so the boss doesn't move around very much. Trying to time the sides so we get hopefully a three cycle here. We might be a little bit behind. We might be looking oh, good. Really good hits in. All right, nice. there we go. Mini boss down. What could go wrong? No. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the reaction I was looking for. But right, I'm going to try to catch a really quick cycle here. If not, no, we're going to die and try it again because I want to get this. I got caught up there. But this is like, I've got to take a death here somewhere, so taking it here so I can show off this one fast strat is worth it. And there we go. Ah. Yeah. All of these spikes are instant death. Um, luckily, the, the pillars you can kind of jump through. We're going to take some damage boosts here, try to catch a platform cycle. Another kind of mandatory thing in a game like this is platforms on cycles. Not nearly as important as the, the global cycles in a game like uh, Bloodstained, but uh, there are a couple that we need to make sure we grab here and there. Burning through our, H our, our health pool here. We've got a little bit of a reprieve and a, a two, two bar um, upgrade there. All right. Gonna just make this and this vertical climb. There are some vertical climbs in this game, and if you get hit, you're going all the way to the bottom. There's just there's no other way. You might get a, like a savior platform here or there, but uh, they're very punishing. It would almost be like easier to just die at the bottom of the screen, but the screen does not save you there. And we are on to the next boss already. It's uh, a little gross if you ask me, but uh, hopefully I can get them off the screen for you pretty quickly. This boss, everything does a lot of damage. These spikes coming up from the floor are three damage a piece. At, you know, I did that as a as an example as a since I was at full health already, and I could take it. Um, and it's it's really easy to get caught up in your jump and like not get every attack out or not nice. get your double jump off. And that this boss spent way too much time on it on my first clear. All right, last two stages. My favorite song coming up. Uh, let's get a couple donations and let the, the fans enjoy the music. Absolutely. We have $25 from Tana who says, Some folks wish for a world where healthcare is equally available to all. Others want to pay the good work for it through gaming. I'm a simple man. I just want to see another dog pet. And we are making progress on that incentive, folks, but don't forget to keep on assigning if you want to see that dog pet. We also have $50 from Strawberry Hearts, who says, I love this event. I'm so glad I get to watch some of it live this year. Good luck on the run. Less than three. Oof. Just Ooh. made that. Yeah, that, that platform you can always make, but sometimes it does not feel like you can make it. Then it's not always, Dan. No, you can't always. You just got to believe. <laughs> you have to believe. If you didn't make it, you didn't believe. And there we go. In these next couple of stages, you're just going to be seeing a lot of death pit traps everywhere with a lot of these enemies, with a lot of projectiles, with a lot of reach. Um, that's just, that, that, just going to be the theme for these next two stages. Yeah, these jumping enemies with the swords do do two full bars of health, and it, they uh, they're the biggest RNG in this level. And it like you can easily bleed time either trying to kill them all. We're gonna grab full health here. Hopefully, get the quick kill on what I like to call the blasphemous mini boss. Hopefully, you can see the likeness to that game. Another great indie. 
I'm gonna take some damage here just so we can get through the final last couple of hits. Another vertical yes. climb coming up. Let's get a, a couple more donations while I try to not fall to the to my death in this pit. If you got them, sell. Absolutely, I do. We have five hundred dollars from Teamster who says. GDQ is one of the highlights of my year, and it brings me so much joy to see so many talented runners, volunteers, staff, and attendees pouring their hearts into the event. Keep up the great work. And we have $10 from Blueberry Muffin, who says, thanks to all the runners, volunteers, and everyone involved in SGDQ. Keep up the great work, and looking forward to everything else coming up this week. Gonna try to not take any more damage here. There's some, some dud. Another sword enemy at the end here. I want to be able, be able to just damage boost through if I need to. Oh, no, all right. Second to last boss, this, we're gonna try to bully this boss as much as possible. It could easily go sideways. This is one of the biggest run killers for me, but. All right, that's a good start. Okay. Try to save some of my sub weapon here. If you get too close, he'll uh, fly off screen and uh, you can't damage him off screen. He also uh, apparently has two wolves inside of him. There they are. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that, that was a good ease up. All right. Some spicy bounces. Yeah, it's, uh, that's pretty tricky right there because the game does not want you to bully him as much as we do, but uh, he's a sad boy now. Sorry. All right, final stage. I'm probably going to be a little quiet here. It's uh, the most challenging part of the run by far. So, uh, Bobby, Argic, if y'all have got anything you want to add, now is, a, now is a great time. So going through this, Bobby. Yes. Coyote jumps, do they exist? Well, I mean, since she has a double jump, technically, so you, you'll get one jump if you've came off it. Yes. Other thing, the attacks. Is it like Mega Man where you can only have three on a screen or is it mash as fast as you can? Like what's the maximum damage output you can do? So it, it's more of akin to like uh, the Mega Man like Wily Wars where like you don't really can't mash like, you know, all that much, but there is like a sort of like controlled rhythm to it. So like you, you, you might have seen that in like the, you know, the first couple of bosses during this run where, you know, it, the, the sound cue might have uh, cued you in on, like, you know, mm. the rhythm of uh, the speed of which she's able to throw the, the kunai daggers at. Yeah, there's a point. Oh, oh. No. I was being greedy there. Those spikes are just too short. Um, there's a point at which, like, mashing, you can mash too fast. Um, the boss rush category is a, a really fun speed run to watch. There's been some uh, great runners that have, like, optimized all the boss fights. Oh, yeah. Um, RTA runs, it's a little less. Um, I'm trying to just go kind of as consistently, as fastly as, po as, fastly as possible, as quick as possible. <laughs> Hey, fastly's a word. and fastly and painlessly and all the leaves. I'm taking a couple of deaths. I'd rather take them in this section. This is like yeah. the more forgiving section. We're going to get to the end where you really want to carry your sub weapon through or else you're just like attacking with your basic attack. All right. Damage boost here a little bit. Fill up. We're going to have a lot of mini bosses here as well. Easy to lose time with these mini bosses because they just kind of like like to take their own time and be a little bit random. Luckily, I get a health up after this one, so I can yeah. afford to take a little bit. And I'm not going to say it, but that's a lot of jumping. You rarely see that many jumps. What are you doing? Woo. That's a spicy jump. There we go. All right, get that full health. I need to save these for this, uh, the sides for this section. We're just going to poke this boy for a little bit. We did not attack, and we can wait for that platform. And these spiders, if you've played this game once or you've played this game a hundred times, um, these spiders are not friends. Yeah, the big spiders will actually spawn smaller spiders the, the longer that they're kept on the screen. 
So uh, the longer you take through a segment, the more you know heinous their you know patterns will get with more enemies. And even one baby spider will knock you off a net, and there's no yes. recovery until you hit the ground. Another little mini boss here. There, there's a good pattern to kill them in as they get more friends. We're gonna try to keep that up. We get them in the middle of the screen here. You have to kill the big one the second time, and now on the third time you have to kill the two small ones first. Hopefully I can get. Ooh. There, landed it. Might uh, not quite. All right, that's fine. Ah, uh, too off. I'd like to keep another about ten sides here for this next section, which this is the last big. Don't want to die because we just there's there's really no no getting around it. You've just got to kill everything here. So having all right now we're clear. Like this section is incredibly long, incredibly yes. long. And again, like any stray hit from any enemy hitbox, whether it be big or small, will send Dan into the lava pits below. So it, it is very careful timing, trying to dodge and take, you know, take care of to not be hit by anything uh, to not meet a, such a grisly fate. Whoa. Whoa. There, that, goes that, your, there goes that, your answer. That, that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that was almost an eaten jump. I uh, I don't know who to thank for that, but somebody was looking out for me. Got one more section here. We're just gonna be patient. Just gonna be patient so we can get our make our way to the boss. Try to keep as much health as possible. Got one more long section here, a long climb. Refill on those. Maybe take a little bit, little bit of damage here or there, depending on how much you might have to jump in for some. Extra health. There you go. Like to be grounded and take that damage there. All right, we're at, okay, I can take two hits from the boss. We're going up. We've got a little bit of a climb going up, so if you want to get another three donation cell, we've got time for it. All right, we have $25 from No Comment, who says, No Comment. $25 from Josie, he says, let's go friends. I hope you raise a lot of money. Remember, in difficult times, look for the helpers. And $25 from Something Uncommon, thank you all for being so amazing. And that means all you tech in the background. In fact, it means all volunteers, you all are awesome. Can we get a round of applause for all of our volunteers? The life of this foundation that is called Games Done Quick. Absolutely. Be nothing without our volunteers. Not at all. Now so we... many people. <laughs> Absolutely. You included, my friend. So we've got a two-phase final boss here. We're going to kind of bully him at the start. And this is also our dad, I think. <laughs> I, think I think that's how the game goes. But uh, dad's got a blind spot right over here in the corner. So we're just going to kind of use this corner spot and bait him over. And even it... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, he can't go quite get attacks off on us. Yeah, even as you see, like, he kind of cycles through the same attacks in the same sort of pattern. So really easy to dodge the first phase's attacks. It'll be pretty menial. It's going to be the second phase that Dan's going to really have to focus on to not be hit for a truck ton of damage. Yeah. We're going to have another health bar, and time will be here in a little bit when it uh, reaches zero. I like to call this phase Merkava from uh, Undernight Unbirth if for any fighting game fans out there. Oh, that, that was, was, so that was the bad pattern. Yeah. That was the bad pattern. All right, a little slow here, but we didn't take damage, which is the important part before yep. we get to unload. All right, save a couple of sides here so we can get, uh, he's going to go, yeah, left side so we can hit him a couple times. Three bounces. We might hit him on the wall here. Let's see. No. Almost. Time's coming up real quick. Three. Time. Time. <laughs> all right. 28 in game. That's. Uh, I will take that all day long. Coming in as under estimate overall. I blame. I blame the initial glitch. That's. That's <laughs> the, that one. That five yeah. seconds there that we needed to die. That that definitely uh, threw threw the pace off. Um, I'm going to make sure to get out here to the credits so we can um, give the devs their due before I give my uh, sign off. Um, I really appreciate Argic and Bobby. Y'all have anything to say before we close it out? 
No, this was an absolutely uh, amazing display of Lords of Exile. Again, PID games have been absolutely eating this entire Games Done Quick schedule. And uh, I really hope you folks will tune in for some Gravity Circuit later on today. Absolutely. I appreciate you inviting me for this one, Dan. Seeing the game for the first time, absolutely phenomenal. Again, get to hear more Dominic music. Like, I'm not going to say Dominic. no to that. There you big go. Fan. Dominic, yeah, yeah. Big right fan, there. big yeah. fan. Big fan on that. <laughs> um, I want to make sure to shout out uh, Bat Bedwood Blackburn, Eternal Red Gamer, and Veg, who are all runners of this game. They've done a lot of routing, a lot of the reason that you know the game. These indie games, you know, we can be a small crew, but we can put together a good showcase when we get a chance. Also, uh, you fail me, my brother back here, who was part of the winning team in the Kaizo Relay, his first GDQ, his first run in. Absolutely. Uh, shout, out, shout out to everybody who's up early in the morning. Shout out to Bobby and Argic. Uh, shout out to the games committee for giving me another chance to show off an indie game. I'm really passionate about these. And also just all the online events that have given me a chance to run and raise money for charity throughout the years. Uh, it's, it's been a lot to me, big or small, anytime I get a chance to show off some of these games, I, I always appreciate it. And uh, that's going to be it for me. We're going to finish out the last day strong. Stick around for some more summer games done quick.